Systematic Theology, class number 190. And we're in Revelation, the 21st chapter. Now I must say this before we go any further. That the book of Revelation has parenthetical statements in it. In other words, it'll say one thing and it'll jump ahead a thousand years or, or into eternity. It'll go into the millennium. It'll go into uh, the tribulation period. It'll go into the pre-tribulation period. And right now we're talking about a new heaven and a new earth. And I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible, the first couple of verses. Now I want you to understand one thing also, that in the millennium there will be death. In the millennium there will be sin, there will be tears, and there will be crying. Because people will be in their literal bodies, they will be in human bodies, and those bodies are capable of sin. And they're capable of doing bad things. And some of them will be executed during this period of time. There will be death during the millennium. But the earth itself will have no curse on it. There will not be any thorns or thistles or anything like that. Lions and and lambs and things like that will lie down together. The, uh, the serpent shall still crawl on its belly, but all of the things, all the other curses, we will not be, uh, we won't be killing animals and eating them during the uh, millennial reign. It will go back like it was here uh, before the flood. The earth will be. Now, the earth, as far as I can tell from the scriptures, from the inference there, is that the earth will be all one piece of ground again. There won't be any continents. There won't be any seas between the continents, but the, there will be a big ocean out there, but not like today. It looks like to me that the, the earth will all be one piece of ground and the water will all be in, in one place also, like the earth was before Noah before the time of Noah, and then in the days of Peleg when God divided the earth, because there won't be any reason to divide the people on the earth. Because God will completely control all things. Jesus is going to rule the earth with a rod of iron. And that means that nobody is going to be allowed to go wrong. In countries all over the world, and even here in the United States of America, we have individuals in governments that uh, abuse people, that lie, that cheat, they steal, they kill in the name of religion and the name of their governments. And even today we have a, a lot of problem with honesty in our government. We're having a great uh, revolution, so to speak, right now in ideas and uh, power in our country. But during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, there won't be any of this. There will be, he will rule in righteousness. If somebody is put to death, if somebody is, is doing anything wrong, they will be immediately, it will be taken care of. And it will be under absolute righteous judgment. So, there will be sin, there will be tears, there will be death during the millennium. But we will have righteous rule and order. God is going to show, show us in the, in the millennial reign how that mankind should have ruled the earth from the time that he created man and placed him in the garden of delicacies or Eden. And then when man sinned, he had a responsibility even then, even then if a man shed an animal's blood or another man's blood, he had to die for that sin. On the earth in the millennium, those rules will still apply. 
the rules of human government are that the government is going to protect individuals from other individuals that are trying to do them harm. That's the basic rules of government. If a man does what we, what we call commits a capital crime, he will be, he will die because of it. Not one person, not one lost person will go into the millennial reign of Christ. All of the unbelievers will be struck dead before the millennium begins. So not one lost person is going to go into the millennium. But their children and their children and their children, and like I said in the past, the women during the millennial reign will be able, capable of probably having a thousand children. Because a woman, she has enough eggs in her ovaries to have a thousand children, when even today. But because of sin and uh, the shorter lifespans that we have today, probably Eve had a thousand children. But all this takes place, so you have to remember, you have to keep separate the idea of the thousand year reign of Christ and the eternal heavens, what's happening with them, don't get confused because there is death and there is tears and there is execution during the thousand year reign of Christ. But upon this earth, God will prove to mankind without the devil, without any demonic influence, that he will still go the wrong way. And God will prove to man how that this earth should have been ruled under God for him. And so we'll see that the resurrected David will probably be on the throne of Israel in Jerusalem, but the earth will be different than it was before. Now let's begin to read the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heavens and a new earth, for the former sky and heavens and the former earth had passed away and vanished. And there's no longer exists any sea. Isaiah 65, 17, and 66, and verse 22. And this is talking about the new heaven and new earth. This is after millennial reign. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, and all arrayed like a bride beautified and adorned for her husband. Then it says here, I heard a mighty voice from the throne, and I perceived a distinct word saying, Behold, the abode of God is with men. Now, this is in the eternal ages. This is not talking about the millennium. And he will live in an encamped tent among them, and they shall be his people, and she shall personally be with them and be their God. Now, that goes back into the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, verse 27. Actually, 26 through 28. And God, now this is jumping into the eternity because in eternity future, there's not going to be any tears. During the millennium, there will be. And God will wipe away each tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be anguish and sorrow and mourning, nor grief or pain or any more. For the old conditions and the former order of things have passed away. That's up to verse number four now. Each tear God shall wipe away. And verse number five, and he said, the one sitting upon the throne, you behold, new I make all things. And he says, you write, because these ones these words are faithful and true. These words are faithful and true. Verse number six, and I'm reading from my uh, doctor's thesis, which is, is actually in Greek and translated. And he said to them, it says, they have occurred, or they became. All things have been accomplished. This is what we call a collective uh, neuter plural. This again on on. And I am the Omega, and I am the Alpha, 
the Alpha and Omega, we go back to, to Gen Revelation, the first chapter, and we find out who the Alpha and Omega is. This is Jesus Christ. And also in John 1 and 1 and John 1 14 and John 1 18, we find out that Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Tau. And he is the Adonai Ha'adonaim, or the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I am the beginning. I am the, uh, the head. The head of all things. And I am the end of all things. And he said, anyone thirsting, I shall give to him a fountain of the water of life. Freely. The rock that followed Israel was Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the water, I am the bread. If anyone is thirsty, come unto me and I'll give you water. And verse number 7, it says, The one conquering, he, each one of these, shall receive the right of sonship. And these things I shall be to him a God, and he shall be to me an heir. And this is in the eternal ages. One, the heir there is one who shall inherit the former estate. Now Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, all the sons of Israel, shall receive the eternal promises. They shall receive those promises to beginning with, to begin with, during the millennium for 1,000 years. And they will serve God and worship God and understand why. That's going to be a thousand year Bible school. And they'll understand what all of those sacrifices were about. And they shall celebrate the, te the Feast of Tabernacles for 1,000 years. But the ones cowardly, apostates, ones who deny, the word is delos there, delois, the ones who deny me, and the unbelieving and the unfaithful, those without faith, that means without saving faith, and ones having become foul and vile and corrupt, having become saturated with sinful acts and practices and idolatry. That's what all, isn't that, that word, ebadele, deleg minois. And then we have another word here, and the ones murderers. The ones that are murderers by habit, outlaws, public enemies, homicidal people. Boy, we've had that in history from Genghis Khan All of the people, the murderers, down to, down to the ages. We look at the Muhammad. All the people that he calls to be murdered in his own lifetime, and then the religion that he handed down and cursed the earth with, that has committed murders for 1,400 years. And the fornicators, the prostitutes, this word here means prostitutes, it also means homosexuality. And the word here, you know, a man and woman desire to be with each other. But men and women sometimes will say they love you for short periods of time, and uh, that's what a prostitute does, a male or a female one. They tell you they love you, and then they go on to the next person. They do this for hire, for wages. And the drug addicts, the pharmacoids, the drug addicts, and the idolaters, the idol worshippers, and the ones liars, they shall have their part and share in the lake of fire, the one burning with sulfur, which is the second death.
the book of life gives us rights to heaven. But those who are not in the book of life have an inheritance also in the lake of fire. And it says that he came, there one came out of the seven angels, one of the seven angels came, the ones having the seven bowls, the ones being filled with the seven plagues. Now we go back to the tribulation period. This is not in the eternal ages, this is not in the millennium. This is in the tribulation period. And it said in the, play, the last plagues, Eschaton, the last plagues, and he spoke with me saying, come. I'm going to point out something to you. I'm going to point out the bride and the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit world upon a mountain. That word mountain there means a government. A mountain great and high. And he pointed out to me the city, the holy city Jerusalem, uh, coming down out of the heaven from God. Now I think at the end of the tribulation period when the right at the when God comes and, and wipes out all rebellion in the war of Armageddon when he wipes all that out that the earth shall see New Jerusalem above the earth. Having the glory belonging to God, and it says, false terror there, it says, uh, uh, a bright burning star, a luminary, a radiance, that new city of New Jerusalem shall radiate like the sun. And it says, like a stone, very valuable, diamonds, the most clearest perfect diamonds reflect, they reflect light, and colors around them. Pearls. Pearls are, there are dark pearls and there are light pearls, there's pink pearls and white pearls, but a pearl will pick up the light around it and the colors around it and you can see a pearl actually changing color as you move around the room with it. I know that uh, when I had the Audie Murphy's pistol that had the real pearl handles on it, they were gigantic pearl handles, that you could see all, you, you shine a, a light into that thing and it would explode with colors. It was real. Mm -hmm. They say the pearl and those handles today would cost well in excess of a hundred thousand, maybe over a million dollars. Because they were so gigantic. This word, uh, foster there, it means uh, burning, it means a star, a radiance, it means like phosphorus. We get a word phosphorus from that. It's like it's got a built-in torch. Like very valuable stone and jasper being as clear as crystal. Having a great wall. A great and high wall. And having gates twelve. And upon the gates there were angels. Twelve angels. And the names, having been inscribed, which is the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel. And Israel means uh, one who wrestled with God or else prince of God. We have this beautiful new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And around the north was Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. Judah, and on the east is Judah, Issachar, Zebulun. On the south was Sibian, Reuben, and Gad. And on the west is Manasseh, Ephraim, and Benjamin. Just as the tabernacle was set up, so shall New Jerusalem carry the remnants of the memory of that tabernacle. 
It said from the east gates, three, and from the north gates, three, and from the south gates, three, and from the west gates, three. And as I told you, those are the way that as the tabernacle was set up and the tribes were around it, so also shall the names of the sons of Israel be on these gates. And then it says here, And the wall of the city, having foundations twelve. Now we have the, we have the twelve tribes of Israel, and now we're going to have the twelve apostles represented in this city, because the true sons of Israel are those believers. They'll be really true sons of Israel in the millennial reign that shall believe and they shall rule with the Lord on this earth for a thousand years and fulfill the Abrahamic and the Davidic covenant. And it says, And the wall of the city having foundations twelve, and upon them the twelve names, of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the one speaking with me, he kept on holding a measuring rod, a measuring reed, a measuring device. And this measuring device was golden. In order he made measure the city, and the gates of it, and the wall of it. Actually, the wall of a herd is what it literally says. Now, these are the measurements of New Jerusalem. Now, I read this to you earlier in a, in a class just before this. And the city, it lies four square. In other words, it's a, it's a cube. And the length of her as much as the breadth, he measured the city with the, uh, the divine measuring device. It said at furlongs 12,000. In other words, 1,500 miles basically, by 1,500 miles. And the length, 12,000 and the breadth and the height of her equal it is. Now the walls are about 72 yards thick, 216 feet thick. And he measured the wall of her 144 cubits. The measure of man and also of angels. And the building of the wall of her is jasper, black green. And the city is clean and clear and perfect, just like gold. Similar to gold, but the gold is so well polished it looks like glass, looks like a golden mirror. And the foundations of the wall of the city has Every stone in that wall is a precious stone having been adorned. And the foundation of the first is jasper, a purplish green cornelian color. And the second is sapphire, shades of blue uh, color. And the third is chalcedony, a whitish bluish gray color. And it's very susceptible to a very high, brilliant polish. And the fourth is an emerald, from pure green to shades of green, like jade. And the fifth is an onyx, or sardonyx. It is a gem exhibiting the color of carnelian and the white of chalcedony in all alternative are alternating layers. And the sixth is a carnelian, a flesh reddish colored. And the seventh, chrysolite, it's a gold colored 
amber stone, like topaz. And the eighth is beryl, a sea green color. And the ninth is topaz, a yellowish color. Different from the modern topaz, by the way. And the tenth is a chrysoprase. It's a golden green color, like something like eek, leek. And the eleventh is jacinth. That's a lavender color, like the hyacinth flower. And the twelfth is amethyst, or purplish violet. This city is beautiful. And the twelve gates are pearls. Pearls are all shades of white to pink and dark colors. According to the order, each one of them, each one of the gates, it keeps on being made out of one pearl. Out of one pearl. Now, Audie Murphy's pistol, the pearls probably started out on each side of that pistol to be probably six inches tall by at least six inches wide and probably three to four inches thick. Now that's a big pearl. Now that's nothing compared to these great gates. But these pearls are God-made pearls. They are a pearl that is the purest, finest pearl. Now there's uh, what we call cultured pearls and natural pearls. And these pearls are cultured by God. The gates keep on being forced, fashioned out of one pearl. And the streets of the city are creation, or gold. It's clean gold, pure as, as a, a looking glass. Looks like you could see through it. You can just see everything. The, the streets of that city will be like mirrors. Golden mirrors. And it says, and the dwelling place, not I saw for the Lord, the God, the Almighty. Here we have the word Jehovah, we have the word Elohim, and we have the word uh, Omnipotent, uh, El Shaddai. And then it says there's a, a, a dwelling place in her. And the Lamb and the city, they don't, they don't have any need for the sun, nor the moon. No Helio and no Selenes. No Selena. In order that they might manifest light. For in that city is the glory shining of God throughout her. It has shined and enlightened her. And the lamp of her is the Lamb of God. The Lamb here is the word, our neon, is the Lamb that's, mar that's marked for sacrifice. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God that stood from the foundation of the very earth to be our Savior and our Lord and our God. Verse number 24. And they shall walk about all the nations in the light of her. All the kings of the earth, they shall bring in the glory of them unto her. And the gates of her know not, they may be shut. Day or night. For it shall not be there any day or night. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations unto her. These are beautiful, this is a beautiful story. A beautiful story of harmony. A beautiful story of uh, concerted worship of God and concerted love for God. Verse number 27, And know not he may enter into her anything profane, Anything common, anything worldly and unholy. No worldly thing. And no one making an abomination. 
Now, because they're not going to be around. They're not going to be anywhere. No person on earth during the millennial reign will ever enter into the city Four Square or New Jerusalem. There will not be one lost person, not one person in their human body ever walk in to that city of New Jerusalem during the millennial reign. Now, as far as I can tell, resurrected souls come down to earth. But not one unsaved person, not one person in their human bodies will ever walk through those gates. They'll see the city and see where they can go. But they shall not walk in there in their human bodies. It says, no liars, no falsehood, <laughs> no politicians. You hear that? No politicians. <laughs> and uh, except the ones, names having been written in the book of life, the book of life of the Lamb. And then in the 22nd chapter we begin to describe more about the eternal garden of God. Let's have a prayer right now. Sharon, do you have any questions in this? Marilyn? <laughs> That's that's Jesus, yeah. He said, but my Bible doesn't have it in red. And, I, and it confused me. Why is that? Uh, I'm confused. Why? Maybe they ran out of red ink. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Why they have red back here? Okay. Well, let's go back up. Let's go back up and see what who's talking here and everything. All right. And I saw a holy city coming down out of heaven, arrayed like a bride. Then I heard a mighty voice from the throne of God and perceived the dignity word, saying, The abode of God is with men, and uh, he shall be with his people, and God shall personally be with them, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and, every, and death shall be no more. Now this is talking about the eternal ages, isn't it? Right. Yeah, okay. And sorrow and mourning, nor grief, nor any pain, for the old conditions and the former are high. And he who is seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. Now this is the one that's seated upon the throne. This is Jesus. This is God. This is God. Okay. This is God speaking. It, yeah. This is God speaking. And he who is seated on the throne said, See, I make all things new. He said, Record this, for these things are faithful and accurate and incorruptible and trustworthy and true and genuine. And he further said, It is done. I am Alpha and I am Omega. Now, actually, I am Alpha and Omega should be in red if it's talking about Jesus talking, because this is Jesus. Okay? Yeah, no, it's a, and it's an I am, but it's not. Yeah. I am, that's the, uh, that's the Exodus 3.14, Ego Amy, or uh, Haya, Asher Haya, in Hebrew. I am, the Alpha and the Omega are the Alif and the Tau, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I, I myself will give water without price from the fountain that springs the water of life. Isaiah 55 and 1, verse 1. See, the New Testament is not separate from the Old Testament. We look at the Bible as 66 books. But so much of the New Testament is fulfilled scripture from the Old Testament. The Old Testament tells us what's going to happen. And the New Testament tells us it happened. The Old Testament, Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22, describes Jesus on the cross of Calvary to be. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John tells us what happened. Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 were fulfilled. Nick, have any other questions? What is all that's going to happen? 
Okay, this is in the eternal ages. Remember? Now, we're, we're jumping over, we're jumping completely over the 1,000 year reign of Christ, and we're going into the eternal ages. Now, Marilyn, you had a question too. Uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of the millennium, yes. after the tribulation period. At the beginning of the millennium, after the tribulation period. And that's when all the saved will go into the kingdom. Okay, the only kingdom. the saved, because the Lord is going to wipe out and kill all, all of the, of everyone that's fighting against Israel, all of them are going to be killed. We know that the beast and the false prophet, they're thrown into the lake of fire, they're going to be the first inhabitants of the lake of fire. We know that the devil is going to be put in the bottomless pit, the Albison, for 1,000 years. And then after the millennium, at the very end of it, now we have the battle of Gog and Magog. The battle of Gog and Magog, and Gog and Magog did not rush it. Okay, this battle is 1,000 years removed from the battle of Armageddon. And that battle takes place at the end of the millennium, and that's when all of those rise up against God. And by the way, these are... These are the inhabitants of the area where Islam's stronghold was. Well, the caliphate, the, the, what we call the, the, the ruling caliphate was. And the reorganized caliphate was. These people are going to rise up again at the end of the thousand year reign. These people from that area, and I've said this before, demons are very territorial. The demons will be turned loose and they're going to go be right back to the territories where they were before and that territory there is where we have the Islamic world today, the terrorists and all of that. This is where the very seat of it is. That's where the seat of the caliphate was. They replaced Constantinople and that's where the seat of the okay, caliphate was. Yes, Mary. Millennium period. Is that when uh, the New Jerusalem is going to occur? Uh, there will be a Jerusalem rebuilt on earth. Okay. And above Jerusalem on earth, up above, like the stars shining like the moon or the sun shining, will be New Jerusalem above the earth for 1,000 years. They're gonna, all of these inhabitants of the earth are going to look up and say, there's God. Right up there. There's God and God's so people. So there's still people on earth. There will be still real people living in real bodies with sinful nature on the earth. Okay. And God will prove to mankind that they, can, they will sin without the, without the help of Satan. Oh, okay. Okay? And that God will show to mankind what the pure, true, perfect rule of man could have been. How the earth could have lived in prosperity. Okay. All of those times. I didn't think anybody was there, you know, after New Jerusalem occurred. No, there, the earth... There will be New Jerusalem will be like a, a star or a or the sun or a satellite over the earth, and it'll be right over the city of Jerusalem. Okay. Sharon, did you have any more questions? Uh, yeah. Okay. This is within uh, the millennium period. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay. Some of the, the some not every all, not all the saved will be part of the bride. They're they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There will be the bride, and then there will be guests of the bride. The ten virgins, they're not the bride. Uh, five of them had their, five of them were saved, and five of them weren't. I think the five that weren't saved and did not prepare the ones that, uh, in, in religious systems in the world, they're not, they're not the bride. They're not the bride. They're separate from the bride, but they're friends of the bride. And I think what they will do is they, uh, the ones that, the, the foolish virgins are the ones that uh, aren't saved. They are the ones in false religious systems that, that don't teach enough to even be saved. And then the, the wise virgins are going to be guests. They're going to be guests of the bride. They're going to be really bosom buddies of the bride. They're at the wedding yeah, feast at like least. The, they're like the bridesmaids. <laughs> yeah, they're like the bridesmaids. They're, like the they're best friends, etc. They're not the bride. Yeah. Yeah, the bride is very special. It's, the bride has a very special place, and not all the saved are bride. Israel is not the bride. It's the bride is made up of faithful church members during the church age. And not all the saved on earth, by no means, will be part of that bride. A lot of people don't okay. understand that because they've never heard the difference, but there are different, there are different stages in hell. There are different uh, qualities of punishment in hell, and there are different, uh, different rewards in heaven. It wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be fair to us if God rewarded everybody and made them part of the bride, would it? And God tells us that. And as plain as that, it gives us an incentive to serve Him that we might be part of the bride. The bride has made herself ready. Salvation comes from God alone, but the bride has made herself ready. She took that salvation and went on with it and served the Lord in the most sacrificial way. Those saints during the tribulation period that die for the word of God will have a special place with God, but they won't be the part of the bride. He said he will make them rulers over different parts of the universe. I don't understand all about that, neither does anybody else. Uh, yeah, but, but martyrs, like, now, they are the bride The ones that are martyred in the world today could be part of the bride, yes. The church is part of the church age. Yes. Right? Yes, because okay. we're in the church age. But the, those that are martyred during the tribulation period will have high honors also. There'll be a different type of reward for them than there is in the world today. It's because they'll go through some horrible experiences there, and it'll take all of their spiritual might to stand against and to die for the Lord and for His Word. Anything else? All right, let's have a word of prayer, and we will send this message out to the world. Our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this presence of these here in this class. Father, I pray that you bless the world with your word and, and these questions that might be asked all over the world. And I think these were real good questions that were asked today in this class. And we thank you for your word and what it means to us and what it means for everybody throughout the world. Please forgive us where we fail you and forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.